Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another month of homeschool show and tell. Every single month, Jessica from The Waldoc Way and I share a theme with you guys for you guys to make videos on as well, representing your take on this topic in your homeschool. And we have a big open playlist for all of you to add those videos to. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell open collaboration is to show that there's not just one right way to homeschool, giving you guys a lot of different voices um, surrounding one theme or topic. So this month we are talking about enrichment and I'm excited about this one mostly because this one I think will look most different in every home um, so you're gonna have a lot of videos of people bringing you along on their enrichment studies whether that's a poetry tea time or whether that's handcraft or whether that's you know baking or poet and artist studies or just how they do enrichment in their homeschool, how they fit it in, where they do it, and how it's done in their home. So I think this is a really exciting topic. I think this is an idea that I, I know personally this was a scary or intimidating topic for me when I first started homeschooling, and now 10 years later, it is probably the area I feel most disciplined in and that if I were to say I know we do one thing well, I would say it would be enrichment. So I'm excited to share how we do enrichment and give you guys a peek inside of a normal enrichment day in our homeschool, and I'm really excited to see how everyone else does it as well. So if you wanna join in on the playlist, the info is down in the description box down below and if you want to follow along with the playlist I'll throw it up here and you guys can work your way through that playlist so like I said I do believe that enrichment is probably the area that we do best in our home right now and the reason for that is just because I place a lot of value on what um, I believe in school would be considered to be enrichment things like poetry art handcrafts, life skills, um, Bible time and theology, and anything that kind of goes outside of the typical reading, writing, and arithmetic, um, education, academics, you know, you know the drill. So when we first started homeschooling, I never expected to get to the point where it was done with ease. It was always something that seemed very intimidating or like it needed to be tacked on to our homeschool day. I couldn't find the time for it, I couldn't figure it out. There are so many ideas out there, so many fun things you can see online, and I'm just like, how am I ever gonna do this well? So I started doing it in little bite-sized pieces, and one year we focused on our read-alouds, and one year we focused on handcraft, and fitting it in piece by piece to our schedule to where now 10 years later, I feel like it's being done well and it's something that is consistently done in our homeschool. So I'm gonna kind of lay out how I prioritize enrichment in our homeschool and why I prioritize it. And then I'll give you guys a peek inside of our day. So I can confidently say that the reason we chose the Charlotte Mason method for our homeschool was because the things that I thought were considered to be extra in a typical education, like the education that I received, were given first priority in a Charlotte Mason education. The idea of laying out a feast of ideas, of creating an atmosphere in your home, of habits being one of the three main components of education, those are the reasons why I chose a Charlotte Mason method. Things like nature study and habit training and memory work, those are the types of things that mattered to me and so that is the reason that we chose a charlotte mason education for the most part when i started using enrichment studies i started using the simply charlotte mason brand curriculum as far as our poet and our composer but over the years i've gotten a lot more comfortable with it and sometimes i branch out on my own so just kind of an overview i feel like um Personally, growing up, the things that I always wanted to earn or get to, like art and music and things like that, were just 
stuck on like a piece of bubble gum to an, my education and never given a place of value. And one of my favorite things about homeschooling is that we can give these ideas and you know just beautiful thoughts a place of value in our children's minds nature study is something you know just being acquainted with nature the fact that my kids are is a beautiful thing to me um the fact that they have just this library in their mind of composers and artists that they make all these connections between a picture that they remember seeing and something that they see when they're out in nature or when we're reading a Bible story and they pull out like, oh, I remember looking at a picture that so-and-so painted about that. Or I remember once, and this was years ago, one of my sons saw a butterfly flying and it reminded him of a song that we had heard when we were doing our composer study. And I just love that these are the ideas that are floating through my kids' minds. And so um, that's why we chose the Charlotte Mason method. And, and I just appreciate that so much of what I would try to throw on top of an education is considered to be the core of the education. So it's a quick overview. Now, the way that I prioritize this, it has flipped over the years. I used to do something called Fun Friday. I thought it was such a great idea. You know, you keep all the fun stuff till Friday, you kind of work your way till Friday, and then you do your handcraft, and then you do your art, and then you, um, you know, do your nature study and things like that, and your poetry tea time. But what I found is that personally, I tire out by Friday, and so I suddenly see all those things as optional. And one thing that I really wanted to do was prioritize it in our schedule. So I realized that Mondays, um, are the day where I, we, we don't really jump well from Sunday to Monday book work. And so I realized that Monday would be a great day to capture um, and inaugurate our week with some of these beautiful thoughts. So Mondays are the day in our homeschool where we focus on some of the enrichment activities that take longer than what would fit into a typical book work type of school day. So. Uh, our handcraft or our life skill this year is gardening and you can't do gardening in 15 minutes and learn it well during the middle of a school day and so we have time set aside on Monday for gardening. Um, Shakespeare, my kids love Shakespeare. It's uh, been difficult for us to piece it in with my kids ages being, well I do have a preschooler as well but the ones who are doing Shakespeare are second grade, fifth grade and seventh grade and their independent work during the day is kind of staggered a little differently. So having time on Monday to do Shakespeare all together is really nice. Mondays are also the day that I schedule their private music lessons because music is something that my husband and I really value, uh, music instruction, and we have to go outside of the home for that. My husband is a great musician, but my kids are currently playing violin. That's not something he's familiar with. Don't look at me when it comes down to musical ability. <laughs> whatsoever, please. Um, so we do use somebody outside um, of our own family and our own home. So we do take private music lessons. So I schedule those for Mondays. And so then we're not finishing our work quickly and rushing off to music lessons. Um, my boys have karate on Mondays. And then my daughter, she dances almost every day of the week, my oldest daughter, but we go ahead and we throw her private point lesson onto Mondays as well, just so that we are capturing anything that takes a little bit more attention or effort. We put that on Mondays and it helps start our week in a way to where we're not um, flustered trying to tack things on like doing our schoolwork and then rushing out the door. It's like Mondays are reserved for the beautiful things and the things that my kids are pursuing in their own time as well. The rest of the way that we do enrichment studies, um, we most often start our school day with our morning basket, which I will put a link up here if you want to see what my morning basket looks like for the year, and our Bible and theology time. So we don't actually start independent work or independent studies until well after 10 or 11 in the morning. So the kids will start their day with their Bible time, we'll do some theology together as a family, we'll read aloud, we'll do a little nature walk, and then We'll do our morning basket and in our morning basket we have things like our poetry and our composer and our artist and our habit training and so that's um, how we do those what I would say more like bite-sized pieces or like laying out a feast of ideas that happens in the morning before they break off and do their math and their science and things of that sort. 
So that's kind of how I break down those studies. Anything that takes a larger amount of our time, I put on our Mondays, we start our week with it. Anything that takes a little bit less time, we start each individual school day with it instead of tacking it on at the end or kind of what I thought was using it as a reward when I would try to use it for Fun Friday, but personally I just wasn't disciplined enough to keep it on Fridays. Now, uh, typically what an Enrichment Monday looks like, and that's what I'm gonna walk you through today. At the end of my little spiel here, I'll show you a glimpse inside of a Monday for us. Typically it looks like this. I start my prep for it the night before by making muffins because we always have muffins on Monday because we're getting out the door either to go volunteer at a community garden, which is how we're learning gardening as our handcraft this year, and I mean our life skill this year, or um, we're going to an enrichment co-op. It's another video I'll throw up here. I feel like I'm sending you so much information, but <laughs> it's, I just, I have a lot to say about this topic and it's best for me to just direct you to other videos where I expand on each idea. But I did start a Charlotte Mason enrichment co-op this year. It's gone very well. Not much at all has changed. So I will do a recap. It's been a request from you guys that I do a recap of our first year of our co-op. Um, but it's most mostly the same as it was when I did that video. So I started a Charlotte Mason Enrichment Co-op and in that we have a morning meeting where we do hymns and poetry recitation and habit or, um, etiquette, missionary study, things like that. The kids have literature, um, they have nature, they have some artist study, they have apologetics. So we either go to that every other Monday, it's just twice a month, or we go to the garden that we volunteer twice a month. I feel like twice a month is the perfect amount of time for us for each of those two things. So I, I start, by, <clears throat> whoa, I like took a breath weird. Um, so I start by making muffins on Sunday night. A lot of our home education, specifically our enrichment study, success depends on my personal discipline. I have to back it up to Sunday night. I have to make those muffins. If we are behind on Monday, I don't have breakfast ready. We're not getting out the door on time. I haven't been organized. That's where the wheels kind of fall off of our bus. Um, things like, you know, independent work and math and stuff like that. My kids are, are totally capable of completing that without depending on my preparation. Um, and they do without fail complete that it's typically my fault if something doesn't go as planned and it, it's because of a lack of discipline. So side note, a lot of um, our success in the, the area of enrichment studies depends on how much I've prepared, how much I care and how much I, um, how disciplined I am with it personally. So, Sunday night I make muffins so we can get out the door Monday either for our Charlotte Mason co-op or for our time at the garden. Now if we're going to co-op, I pack lunches the night before. If we're going to the garden, I'll prep something quick for lunch so that when we come home around noon, we are eating lunch and doing something fun together. So if we're going to co-op, like I said, we'll have lunch there and hang out until the kids have their music lessons. If we're coming home from the garden, We'll clean up, tidy up after the garden, unpack everything, and they'll have lunch. And when they have lunch at home is when we do something fun, like they get, we so one Monday a month we have Mailbox Monday where they get their letters. They have a few different letter subscriptions that we really love, and I'll put them all in the description box down below. Um, so they'll have their Mailbox Monday while they are doing their lunch. Um, some weeks they'll do their kiwi crates or their tinker crates. Some weeks we'll play one of our favorite learning games. We just have some fun at lunch in a way that enriches our day. So like I said, the learning games, the letters, they learn so much with those letters. That's probably their favorite day, of their favorite Monday of the month. Um, anything else that they're wanting to work on. Sometimes they want to do a watercolor from Let's Make Art online or something like that. So that's what we do at lunch right after the garden on those Mondays that we go to the garden. Then we head off to violin. Um, we come home and do Shakespeare and smoothies. <laughs> we have smoothies every afternoon before their uh, activities, before karate, before dance, before golf or whatever it is they have that day. We have an afternoon smoothie to hold everyone over. And then 
uh, on Mondays we do Shakespeare. The kids really love Shakespeare. We're currently doing Midsummer Night's Dream and my older three, not my youngest, my older three really enjoy having their smoothies and listening to each of the scenes. Uh, so each Monday we'll listen to one of those scenes and discuss. After that is when we break off and we go to karate, we start getting ready for dance. This is where once again it matters that I've prepared in order to accomplish all of this and not have much of a break in between. And in order for me to sit and enjoy these things with them, I have to have crock pot Monday meals prepared every time. So in the morning while the kids are eating their muffins or and I'm packing lunches, I'm also prepping something in the crock pot because our afternoons get a little bit hectic between karate, between dance, uh, or between violin, karate, um, dinner, and then dance, and private lessons, and then pickup, and then bedtime, and da 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 da. So that is what a typical enrichment Monday looks like on days we're going to the garden or on days when we have co op. Um, I do plan to keep Mondays as our enrichment day. It's been a wonderful way to start our week off. Again, if we go from Sundays, which are busy, we have a, a bigger dinner on Sunday nights, we're at church, we socialize after church. Um, if I didn't have these enrichment activities planned on Mondays, I would tend to not get an 8 a.m. start with our book work, not start on morning basket right away. I would kind of start tidying up from the night before and anything that I had left out. And then next thing you know, it's like noon and I'm like, oh, just do your independent work. So making Mondays our enrichment day and having plans set in stone really has captured um, what I used to kind of let go on Mondays. And it also keeps us from avoiding things at the end of the week just because mom's tired. So enrichment Mondays have been the way to go for us. We have really enjoyed it. And then starting Tuesday through Friday, we get into our typical academic work with some of the other enrichment things thrown into our morning basket. So that is how we do enrichment in our home and how I prioritize it. Things, disciplines that I've learned along the way to um, help get us going. I think the hardest part of being a homeschooling mom is realizing that you can easily become the distraction or the reason that things don't run smoothly. So, you know, it definitely depends on me and my preparation and, and all the work I put in to make sure things run well on Mondays and make sure that I'm in a place to get going um, so that my kids can follow suit. So I'm going to leave you with that info. I'll show you a little peek at a typical Monday. I just recorded a recent Monday, um, just, you know, from morning through the afternoon. And if you guys want to see how other people do enrichment in their homeschool, make sure you check out that playlist. Or if you'd like to add to this playlist, you have until the end of the month. So thank you, Jessica, for hosting this open collaboration with me. I'm excited about this topic and I will see you guys soon. Fisher.